Hi guys, welcome to Northern Oz Explorer. I'm Drew. So today I'm going to be starting the build for the install of the Hilux. The intention is to basically have most of the electric, electrical equipment uh, situated here in this panel next to the drawers. It's basically a bit of a dead space. There's a fair bit of room. You can fit the battery, all of the electrical setup, run a cable through to the back of the tub, drill a hole, run it under the vehicle up into the engine bay and then connect it up there. But what we'll do is have the, I'll have the monitor here, probably have the switch, switch panel down here as well, mounted at the front here. This is actually metal, so I'll cut out some holes, appropriate holes in here for the metal. Then up here will be the outlets, where all the outlets are situated. And then electrical stuff when I need to run inside, like the lighting and stuff, I'll just secrete up into the fiberglass canopy uh, to get them all up. So the first step I'm going to take is to build the uh, section where I'm going to house the plywood marine ply, cut it down to house all the equipment, which I'm then going to bolt on through the into the drawers, uh, into this side of the drawers. Just bolt it through there, and that way I'll have a system where I only have to basically connect two bolts. Uh, there's actually some pre-existing holes, so I could probably even use some of the pre-existing holes there so I don't have to drill lots of different holes into the metal sides of the drawers. The ply, uh, these boards are just ply, so when I put the outlets in, that'll be pretty, pretty simple to knock a hole through, situate them in, screw them down, and make it all neat and flush. So with that, I'll get cracking on with uh, cutting up the ply for the battery connection area. So I've just finished cutting up the plywood to make up the frame which I'm going to connect everything to. Just going to do a quick test fit in the back of the Hilux, make sure it all fits and works out. Because um, I don't have to pull it out and recut it again later. <laughs> so that all fits in the back of the area really well, the old adage measure twice, cut once. So I'll uh, get that inside, I'll tidy up the wood a bit and then start to put it all together. So as you can see, I have mapped out where everything's going on the platform. Basically the way that this will sit in the Hilux is under uh, this panel here, which will sit around about there. And then on top, I will have some holes drilled for the outlets, which will run directly from the circuitry up to here. And then the monitor sits basically at the front here and that's where the switching panel will switch as well. So that's the intention of how it's all going to sit together. I'll just quickly run through, now that it's all in place, the overview of how it all operates. So this is the DC to DC charger. You've got the red wire which goes through to the main battery. So that gets connected up to the main battery with a run of cable from the rear of the Hilux in the tub through to the engine bay. The negative will be ground off on this negative bus bar and everything from this bus bar will be grounded off back to the chassis. So that will be a common point for everything on the electrical circuits. The yellow wire is for the solar connector. So that's, you can put unregulated solar in because the DC to DC charger has a solar controller in it. And that's the one that will be, I'll use the red Anderson plug for. So that is the positive terminal basically for it. And then the negative, I'll create a negative wire. The negative wire will go back and connect up to the negative bus bar. The gray, uh, sorry, the brown wire connects to the auxiliary battery, which charges it through the DC to DC charger. There are three ancillary small wires. The blue wire is an ignition wire. Some vehicles drop in voltage 
uh, that require to go back to the ignition to know when the vehicle's on. You don't need to do that for a Hilux, so that's basically a redundant wire, it's not gonna be used. The orange wire is utilized for the determination of the charging profile, depending on what sort of battery you are. Uh, you have, I'm using an AGM, so that doesn't need to be connected at all. And the green wire is utilized for an LED indicator light. I'm probably not gonna put one on, bother about putting one on, so I'm not gonna use that wire at all. So I don't have to do anything at all with those wires. The black wire or the negative, I'll connect up straight to the panel here shortly. Basically, I've got connectors that goes neatly into there. And then I will use the crimping tool, which is just, it's pump action. And you just pump it to basically close and crimp down. And then when you're done, you release it, it opens back up. And then what I'll probably do is put some solder on it just to make a really good fit. You don't really need to when you crimp, but you know, the, the better, more connections you have and the more secure and safer it is. I've also got a number of heat shrink wraps. So these ones, put them over the wires and then you put, I've got these connectors because some of these will have to be extended obviously. So for example, the, uh, the one that's gonna connect to the solar input is gonna have to be extended. That's gonna be connected. And then all I have to do is put the two wires in there, crimp those two wires down on there with the crimping tool, and then use the uh, heat shrink wrap over the top. And then that'll create a nice connection that's not going to come out anywhere. Uh, it's gonna stay nice and tight and strong. So what I'll do is from the auxiliary battery, I will then run a cable through to this panel here. So this is the multi bus bar panel I was talking about. So I'll run a cable through to here, a positive cable, and then all of the circuits, other circuits will run off of here. So I'll have one circuit running off of here to the, uh, the bus block, to the, uh, where all the fuses are. And then from here, I will run cable to the switches. And then from the switches, I will run through to the outlet. So this will be a circuit breaker to here. These are actually wired up as a single unit. So what I'll have to do is rewire it. You can see there's only four wires. Two wires, so the blue wire and the yellow wire are for the dash lights. Uh, I haven't decided whether I'll wire them up yet or not. I, I might do, I probably won't. The red wire is for positive uh, into, and you can see it's linked in chain. So the idea is you would have one cable coming in with all of the power, and then each of these switches has an individual switch that you can connect to, uh, which goes off to run whatever accessory you've got, and then you've got the common ground that would come back and connect up, in this case, to the, um, to the common ground of this block, uh, which then in turn will connect one wire from this block, uh, because it's a major accessory, through to the bus block. So what I've got is just some connectors. And again, these are just crimping connectors. Um, they will go on. So what I will do though is to prevent, to make sure they're all individually fused, I will remove this red chain of plugs, of connectors, and I will create individual connectors for each one. So there'll be a connector in going from the block with the appropriate fuse and then the wire coming out to the accessory outlet or the lights or whatever I'm gonna have wired up. I think these have a 20 amp rating, the switches themselves. So you just gotta be mindful, particularly with any electrical, and I'm no 12 volt expert, but one thing you've gotta be really mindful of is making sure that you've got appropriate fuses and your fuse uh, amperage is always smaller than what your wire amperage is, because otherwise you want the fuse to go, not the wire to melt, because that's when it obviously becomes a fire hazard. So just make sure that whenever you set these up, you look at all the amperage ratings and you, you built in a, in a factor to make sure you're never gonna exceed those ratings. So that's basically the setup. What I'll do now is I'll run through a quick overview of how to crimp and solder a wire, and then I'll crack on and um, just plug away at this for the afternoon. 
So what I'm doing here is getting one of these connectors and that's going to connect to the end of the negative terminal here and then onto the bus bar there. Uh, always make sure you put your heat shrink wrap on before the connectors because you won't get them on afterwards. So this is basically going to go around like that. Uh, so I'll put that in here, like that. And then it's just a matter of crimping down on it until you get a nice, solid, firm crimp. Like that. And then you can see that is as tight as anything and it's not going anywhere. So I might just, um, actually I probably don't even need to put solder on that. Might leave that because I don't think the solder is going to add anything to that. And I'll just put the, um, the heat shrink wrap over the top. I'll just get the heat gun prepared and then uh, quickly do that. So this is the heat gun. So then installing these heat shrink tubes is just a matter of turning the gun on and then applying the heat and that'll just tighten up around there making a nice firm seal so it's nice and protected and make sure that that wire doesn't come into contact with anything that it's not supposed to and these heat shrink tubes have got glue on the inside as well. So it glues everything in place to make a really, really firm, tight connection. And that's basically that. And then that'll connect here onto the bus bar. And then uh, I'll just wire up the remainder of the wires and uh, give you an, an overview when that's all completed. So as you can see, I've finished off the wiring for this platform. Cables at the moment are all a bit of a mess. I haven't put any of the conduit over the cabling because I wanted you to be able to see where all the cables run and the different positive and negative cables. So everything is basically all set up and ready to go other than the switching panel, which will be run through the fuse block to run the minor accessories. So the cigarette lighter or the accessory port, the USBs and the angle fridge. So they'll run through this. I'll do that in another episode, but the only connector left for this setup is the positive cable, which connects through to the main battery and another cable, which will ground out the bus bar through to the chassis. You can see I've set up the two battery terminal connectors We've got the positive and the negative. So the negative cable runs through to the monitor shunt. From the shunt, the, there is a cable, another main cable to the bus bar, and then all of the negatives for all of the circuitry connect to that bus bar. When you connect one of these battery monitors, it is absolutely essential that the last, the last uh, port in it is a direct connection from the, from the shunt to the negative terminal. So everything else that the, the loads are going through uh, when in their return has to connect onto one side, then the only thing that should be connected to the other side is the battery negative. That's it, nothing else. Everything else runs off of here, or in this case, I've just extended that up to the bus bar and everything runs off of there. For the positive terminal, you can see there's two cables going in. One is the main cable for the loads. So all of the main loads run through this fuse block, which is the, the major fuse block. And then this cable here connects through a MIDI fuse to the DC to DC charger. So this cable is drawing all of the power out for the accessories. And this one is putting power in from the DC to DC charger. So the main cable draws power out across to this bus bar. From this bus bar, the only things I've got connected at the moment is the draw for the Anderson plug 
and to the bus block. So this bus, uh, sorry, to the fuse block. So this fuse block's all connected up. You can see the negative cable going back. That's fused off here with a 50 amp MIDI fuse, which just connects through. And then for the Anderson plug, I've got these plugs are rated at 40 amps, uh, sorry, 50 amps, but the fuse I've put in there is a 40 amp in just to build in a bit of factor and a bit of safety. Um, everything else will run off through these, and you can see that I also have the solar regulator set up as well, which is connected directly through to the DC to DC charger. So this is unregulated solar that goes into this port. You can also run regulated solar into your normal Anderson plug, but this one is, you can put in unregulator because the DC to DC charger is a solar regulator as well. On the ends of the unused wires, I just put some heat shrink tubing and heated it up and sealed them off so they're not gonna make any connections with any earths or anything else, so they'll be all fine. And if in the future I swap out the AGM battery for a lithium, for example, I can use the orange wire to change the charging profile, just snip off the end, connect it up, and that way uh, I'm not putting that wire permanently out of use or out of action. So that's basically it for this episode. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will reiterate that I'm not an auto electrician. If you're gonna be doing any 12 volt work, either know what you're doing or seek assistance from a professional, have a professional installer. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.